question is, if you could only work on one thing during your time on council, what would it be? How would you do it? And how would you pay for it? Please be as specific as possible in all details. And I invite Sean Skinner to speak first. Thank you very much, uh, Brad, and uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, good evening to my fellow candidates. Uh, the one thing that I would uh, work on if I were to be elected in this by-election would be the whole issue of accessibility in our city. And accessibility to me includes walkability, it includes public transit, it includes people being able to get out and get to medical appointments, socialize, to work, etc. Now, how would I do that? Well, I'll speak to my most recent experience on Metrobus. I was a commissioner at Metrobus until I declared that I was running for the seat and I had to resign. And uh, I'd like to think that we did a lot of good work as a team at Metrobus. Uh, we tried to get a university pass in so university students could have access to public transit. Uh, we went to the provincial government to see if we were able to convince them to work with us to have people uh, who are uh, low income uh, be able to access bus passes to help them with their needs. And we were successful in that and the province to their credit stepped up and put some money forward to assist with that. And we provided as Metrobus as a city, uh, a discounted rate so that that could happen for people. We also talk about snow clearing. Uh, that's been a, a topic uh, over the last number of weeks. Um, there's been talks about the survey that was done by the city in the past while. And um, you know, I was one of the people who responded to that survey and participated in that public engagement. And I would like to see our sidewalks cleared. There are a lot of people in particular in Ward 2 who walk or use public transit and do not have access to a vehicle or do not want to have access to a vehicle. And they should be just as supported as the people who drive vehicles and who we spend a lot of time and money clearing roads for. There's no reason why the people who do not want or do not have access to a vehicle aren't able to be able to get around just as easily as the people who are in vehicles. So from my perspective, what I would say is that accessibility would be a number one thing that I would try and work on. And I think accessibility basically would lead people to economic opportunities, physical well-being, mental well-being, social activities, and a number of things like that. So that's my response, Mr. Glynn. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Carol, if you could only work on one thing during your time on council, what would it be? How would you do it? And how would you pay for it being spe as specific as possible? Okay, I'll try that again. Thank you and good evening to uh, your viewers and to candidates. Thank you for inviting me to this forum. If I could work on one thing, it would have to be something that's coming up very soon and that would be the uh, upcoming budget and that would be maintaining the current level of taxes. Um, and I think we could do this very easily by finding efficiencies in our operating costs. Um, for example, um, we could, you know, eliminate that subsidy um, on, at mile one and our convention center, the costs associated with those, they're not revenue generating propositions for the city and I think we need to negotiate the terms of a transaction for, for dealing with that. Uh, I think we could also look at some of the capital works projects and determine what can be delayed for a year or two that are not going to have any significant impact on the people and in light you know, in light of the current economy. So in this economic climate, we do have to find solutions that are going to work for the people, but are not going to interfere with the needs of what the people of the city require. And while I can appreciate, I, I will say this, while I can appreciate the nature of the question where you talk about if we could do one thing, let me just simply say to you that I can't even imagine taking office and dealing with one issue. Uh, War two is a very large, a dynamic and diverse part of the city. And it's a mixture, you know, of the old city with the new, you have suburbia with the old city, historic properties, you have family housing, you have all kinds of different issues. It's a pretty much a melting pot within this city. 
It requires somebody who has the ability to juggle a myriad of issues and concerns. And as an effective counselor for Ward 2, that, ha that has to be someone who can multitask. I'm experienced in multitasking and I have taken on many issues, big and small. And I, having talked to many of the constituents in, in this ward, I can tell you that I'm ready to start off with dealing with many of the issues that they've already raised with me uh, while I've been talking to them. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. Matt, if you could only work on one thing during your time on council, what would it be? How would you do it? And how would you pay for it being as specific as possible? All right. Uh, I think if I were to work on just one thing, it would have to be uh, investing in planning, equipment, and personnel so we can get to the point where we can have our sidewalks cleared and safe uh, within 24 hours of a snowfall. Um, in the last few years, it's um, been pretty common for some sidewalks to go three and four days without being uh, cleared. And that's uh, very problematic because it forces people to either one, um, walk in unsafe conditions or two, stay inside for a long period of time. Uh, neither of those are very good things to be at. It also compounds the issue of uh, snow clearing in general because as people walk on the sidewalks, they pack down the snow and ice forms. Uh, when the city uh, equipment staff do show up, it's much harder to clear those sidewalks. So how would I do that? Um, I think it, a very important first step would be implementing the uh, recently proposed and struck down a $1.35 million increase to the city snow clearing budget. Uh, how, how we could pay for that would be, uh, I think one easy fix would be to eliminate the commercial vacancy allowance that gives landlords a 50% tax break on um, their business tax. Uh, in 2018 and 2019, uh, that amounted to about $4.3 million each year in potential or lost potential revenue for the city. Now, some people would say that um, we have to be careful because we're in tough economic times and, you know, uh, maybe this tax break can help small businesses. But the reality is the majority of commercial space in this city is owned by uh, wealthy uh, property management companies and holding companies and things like that. And this uh, tax break generally amounts to be a tax break for the richest of the rich um, amongst us. Thank you, Matt. Lauren, if you could only work on one thing during your time on council, what would it be, how would you do it, and how would you pay for it, being as specific as possible? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, and hello, everybody, and very best wishes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if I could work on one thing while on council, it'd be the downtown pedestrian mall. Uh, as someone who spent 25 years in business on Water Street, I've been entrenched in the downtown core, and I've experienced many different shifts in the economy down there in that time. I feel this is the concept that's been the biggest shift in my time there. It was, it was an absolute game changer. Um, it was new and exciting. It drew people that were new to downtown down there. Um, downtown has been challenged a lot in, in recent years. There's been oil and gas companies that have moved out. Uh, there's the growth of, of power centers, of course, online shopping, these types of things. So there's been a lot of things impacting that area. This is a time to be innovative and avail of every opportunity we can to revitalize the downtown core. Uh, the downtown is an asset to the entire city. It's the center of culture, commerce, finance, many, many things. It all started as an emergency effort, of course, but people really gravitated towards it. It was an organic thing that just kind of took on a life of its own. Um, I've spoken to many people in the downtown area, retailers, bar and restaurant owners, people working in corporate environments, banking, et cetera, et cetera. And the, the, overwhelm, the, the, the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, I also understand that the concept is not perfect and there, there was a downside and uh, I've been speaking to uh, Duckworth Street, for example, I was speaking to many business owners on Duckworth Street, and I think we need to carry on with those conversations and sit down at the table and everybody bring their ideas forward. And I think uh, with proper communication, we can figure out solutions to make the entire downtown um, 
a vibrant and successful area. Uh, as for the costs, the, the beautiful thing about this project is the businesses themselves will feed a lot of it. They, the businesses will, will be responsible for the infrastructure. Furthermore, I've noticed a huge increase in the interest in vacancies down there. There's a lot of people asking questions about vacancies. So those tax dollars, once those properties are, are occupied, those, uh, those monies will, will contribute to the project as well, of course. So it's just one organic model that kind of feeds itself. It brings people, uh, brings businesses and uh, gets people away from other areas in the city, like, you know, the power centers, why not? It brings people back to the downtown core, which of course, as I said, is, is an asset to the entire city as a whole. Thank you, Lauren. Greg Smith, if you could only work on one thing during your time on council, what would it be? How would you do it? And how would you pay for it being as specific as possible? Hi, everybody. Thanks for having um, all of us. Happy City. Hello to the fellow candidates and hello to everybody watching online. One of the biggest and most important things, and uh, it's near and dear to me, is accessibility on the side of laneways being clear and sidewalk snow clearing. Uh, I think we need to make sure that they're accessible all year round. Our roadways are vital for transportation and for safety. So should our sidewalks and our laneways. As someone who rides the bus, I walk to services, I walk to work sometimes if the weather's good. Having ice covered and snow covered sidewalks is dangerous for everybody in this city. And uh, we really need to do a better job on that. The way that I would pay for that, first of all, I would look to um, mimic the $1.3 million that was suggested by council this year. I would do that without raising taxes. I don't think that it is attractive or it is a good idea to raise taxes during a pandemic when people are already struggling. I think that what we can do though, however, is uh, the sale of mile one, which I think is a really good idea. Um, sell that for somewhere between 15 to, 12, 15 to 20 million or so. Um, and then we could have multiple year plan for that 1.3 million. And also um, eliminate the St. John's Sports and Entertainment subsidy. Uh, that was 3.4 million, like I said, last year. Um, I think there's other ways that we can find ways to lower costs on this as well. And uh, talking with people and, you know, looking at stuff myself, there's other jurisdictions across our nation that actually have homeowners and business owners uh, clear the sidewalks that are adjacent to their property. So I think there's ways that we can uh, get this done, make St. John's safe for everybody and uh, not raise taxes. And that would be one of the biggest things for me. Uh, to to go forth into City Hall. Thank you, Greg. Ophelia, if you could only work on one thing during your time on council, what would it be? How would you do it? And how would you pay, pay for it, being as specific as possible? Good evening, folks. Let me mess around the windows a little here. The happy City for having us and to everybody else for coming. Am I audible, Brad? You are. We got you. Thank you. Uh, so to echo the points that a number of my colleagues have been making here tonight, uh, I'm a pedestrian primarily. I've never owned a car in my life. I've been a, I've been a long-term pedestrian in St. John's. I've been living here for 13 years, and uh, I know firsthand how rough the conditions of sidewalks get here in the winter. Uh, if I had to focus on one thing, it's been the issue I've been yelling about here at the age of 15, uh, which is improving sidewalk snow clearing. Uh, to get to this as comprehensively as I can, I think we need to be looking at our working methods as effectively as possible to make sure that uh, we're using the most up-to-date we can uh, be that it, you know, uh, devices like icebreakers or snow melters uh, that could potentially uh, radically, you know, radically transform the way that we do business uh, with sidewalks and also changing the, the timing of procedures to ensure that sidewalks are cleared earlier and then either not filled in by snow plows, especially in the downtown where we have no boulevards for the piling of snow, or that if that is inevitable, that they be cleared again by the city as quickly as possible. In Halifax, where I grew up, we do have a residential clearing requirement, which worked quite well and which I had no, pro no particular problem with when I was growing up. Uh, you know, I think it's worth investigating. I'm not going to say I'm going to implement it because I understand that, you know, for some people that could be quite difficult, but I think it's worth investigating. So it's a matter of evidence-based policy because I think that's extremely important instead of mere conjecture. Uh, I think in, in terms of how we're going to fund this, a number of points on my platform address, I'm looking to end a lot of handouts and I'm looking to end a lot of favors that I think we do for, uh, for the wealthy. Uh, in particular, I think we're looking at issues like uh, progressively reducing the vacancy allowance in each year that it's claimed. We're looking at tying the size of the SJSC uh, operational grant 
uh, to observed economic and cultural benefits so that at the very least we can make sure that we're saving as much as we can there. Uh, I don't prefer to have some of us have said, it's, it, but I, I'm going to keep in mind that in the recent uh, public engagement process on snow clearing, quite a lot of residents did say they would be okay with a small increase on taxes. While it's not something that I'm necessarily looking to propose, should tax increases come down the pipe at some point in the near future, uh, as some people are certainly beginning to say they are, I will make sure on council that the money goes to getting our sidewalks clear. Having to walk on the snow and ice, and I will make it and I will fix this for all of us. Thank you, Ophelia. And Greg Noseworthy. If you could work on one thing during your time on council, what would it be? How would you do it? And how would you pay for it being as specific as possible? Well, firstly, again, as everybody has done, uh, thank you, Brad. Thank you, Carrie. Thank everybody uh, at uh, Happy St. John's for putting this together. I know a lot of work goes into this and uh, really appreciate that. The reality is, is that this is a 10 month position. No, we're, we're going to the polls again next September to come out guns blazing saying I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these grandiose things. It's, it's not gonna be possible. Uh, it's a 10 month term. There's only gonna be an opportunity to do certain small things and to work for a better, brighter future. The one thing that I would do that is cost neutral, meaning that it will not cost the city any more at all, it won't cost a dime, is to introduce a seniors ride free day and many municipalities across the country do this. Ottawa does it, uh, a whole bunch of other capital cities do it. The idea being that we allow senior citizens, the ones who have the highest accessibility need by per capita, per population basis, we give them an opportunity to go to medical appointments, to go grocery shopping, uh, to go visit friends, family, do whatever they need to do. And there's no cost to it. It's eaten up by the fact that the bus has an overhead and that's it, there is no cost. We might lose a couple of dollars here and there for certain senior citizens who would ride the bus, uh, but $2 for one person to save a few pennies here and there, it's not that great. We're fortunate that the provincial government recently uh, introduced an income pass for uh, a number of people. Uh, however, the reality is that doesn't capture everybody and there's still a number of uh, persons who are not able to uh, get accessible, affordable, safe transit throughout the city. It'd be a great thing to be able to go out and, and spend a bunch of money and do all these kinds of things. But you know, the reality is we have a financial crunch coming right now. Uh, COVID-19 has wrecked the budgets of, of the city. Uh, the city has a number of contracts with different um, organizations, um, with a number of sporting uh, organizations as well that it needs to uphold. Uh, to turn our backs on those uh, and sell model one, we're gonna eat some costs there. There's gonna be some penalties for that, there's no doubt. Uh, so we need to be aware of that and make sure that any decisions we do are cost neutral uh, while not increasing the taxes on the citizens of, of St. John's. Thank you. Thank you all for your responses to our first question.